The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the world of your own terrifying imagination. It has been said that we are prisoners in a dark closet with small openings that on occasion admit some light. Small wonder that the demons who lurk in the deepest corners are more real to us than the sweet light of reason outside. There is so much evil in our world that light turns naturally to shadow. Even the love of Stephen and Amelia Stampler for their son, Michael, is converted to suspicion in this dark closet we live in. Reverend Stokes, I don't want a theological debate. I want you to tell your congregation the truth. And what is that, Dr. Stampler? That my son, Michael, conducts his lab experiments for scientific purposes. And shall I ask him to believe in coincidence? What coincidence? That a peaceful town is ripped apart every time your son returns. That cattle die for no reason at all. That we are suffering epidemics and the worst drought in our history. All because of coincidence? Yes. This is the 20th century. What else could it be? Ask your son, Dr. Stampler. Ask your son, Michael, if he's just doing lab experiments. <laughs> mystery drama, A Sacrifice in Blood, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Milt Wissoff and stars Patricia Rowe and Ralph Bell. It is sponsored in part by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Now it is time to turn to the macabre and nightmare world where there is no shortage of blood. Our tale opens on a pleasant enough note in a fashionable restaurant where Dr. and Mrs. Stampler are celebrating a special occasion. But I promise you, it will end in true gothic horror. Not another drop, Stephen. I've had my fill, and so have you. I suppose you're right, my dear, but <laughs> this is really so special. One more dig, and the Stamplers hang up their shovels. Oh, not really. But we'll be digging up flower beds and compost heaps instead of ancient grave sites. No regrets? None, my dear. We should have retired years ago. Then why not now? I mean, what can this one dig mean? Well, it will be a fitting climax to our career, Amelia. Perhaps the most significant find of our lifetime. Professor Starubius agrees with me. The last excavations there indicate a pre-Toltec civilization existed that was not completely archaic. A highly sophisticated people. Who worship the devil. Well, why not? Most of us still do. Black masses are held in California. Covens of witches gather in New Mexico. Blood rites take place in the shadows of New York skyscrapers. Oh, nonsense. You've had too much wine. Oh, too much wine. I haven't had enough. Come, Amelia. Let's toast the occasion. To a splendid find. To a safe return. Dr. Stabler. Dr. Sammler. Yes. I am Professor Sarubius. Oh, thank you for meeting us. This is my wife, Amelia. My great pleasure. It's very nice of you. Not at all. Oh, here, uh, let me put your bags in, please. Uh, will you get in? I uh, can't tell you how I've looked forward to meeting you, Professor. Miguel, if you please. Oh, and uh, I am honored by the opportunity of working with so eminent a scientist. And I would be delighted to have a nice hot bath and about three days of uninterrupted slumber. <laughs> oh, planes are almost as uncomfortable after ten hours of flight as the small donkeys we rode to the Shenandoah site. The Toltecs have always been regarded as the earliest civilization in the Americas. The new finds at Ashtapolco may show one much heavier steel. 
You really believe it was a civilization? Almost certainly. Not by our standards, perhaps. But certainly, in its day, you shall have the opportunity to see for yourselves. We leave at 5 a.m. Monday morning. But that's three days away. Why the delay? Ah, there is much preparation, including the paperwork. You shall get some rest, and I will have the pleasure of acting as your host, if you will permit it. Of course. And forgive my impatience. Who's there? It is I, Miguel. Just a second. Uh, forgive me. I know it is late, but it was necessary for me to see you. Oh, that's all right. Come on in. We weren't in bed yet. What is it? I, uh... I am afraid I have bad news for you. We will have to postpone our trip. Why? It, there is word of trouble in the mountains where the site is. But what kind of trouble? Oh, nothing serious, but it will cause us some delay. Why didn't you tell us sooner? I just learned it, Stephen, when I returned to my room. Well, how long will the delay be? I was... That is hard to say. What kind of trouble is it, Miguel? An uh, Indian has been found. Murdered. It was... Uh, it was a ritual killing. His skin has been removed. <sighs> oh, God. Well, we uh, still get back to the basic question, Miguel. How long will we be delayed? Then you're still bent on going? Well, of course, Abeda. A native killing isn't going to stop me. I've encountered worse on other digs. Well, answer me, Miguel. Perhaps you should forget it, Stephen. Oh, come on. Now, both of you, I'm not going to change my plans. If you insist, we will continue. But I must warn you, it will be difficult to assemble a crew... But not impossible. No, no, not impossible if if we pay enough. There is always someone who will take a risk if the inducement is great enough. I guess you're right, Miguel. See what you can do. Then you'll go along with me? I wouldn't miss it for the world. <laughs> They're not making much headway, Miguel. Can't they dig any faster? We are up very high, Stephen. More than 10,000 feet. It is not conducive to strenuous exertion. They didn't display too much zeal on the climb, either. Well, they're not used to the altitude. Why didn't we get men who are? But you know the answer. No one else would come. You haven't seen anyone else since we got up here. They know better. They have broken through to a new chamber. Well, I hope it's more fruitful than the last one. Let's go take a look. Look there. They have an opening wide enough to go through. May I? Of course. This is your excavation, Stephen. Are you are you all right? Yes. Come on in. It's... My God. It's so still in here. Even the echoes die after thousands of years. We seem to be in the anteroom. I imagine the main chamber is just through those doors. It would appear so. Get the men in here. We've got to get those doors open, and it looks like one heck of Siga. a job. Siga, Siga pronto. No, no. No quiero entrar all. Siga. No, no, no. Siga pronto. No, well, what are they waiting no. for? They will not enter. Well, tell them they'll get docked if they're not in here pronto. It is no use. They will not come. All right, then we'll get the doors open by ourselves. Let's see how thick they are. Throw me a hammer, will you? Hmm. It's pretty solid, big gal. Look! The doors are opening. How? Well, perhaps Stephen struck some kind of a trigger mechanism by accident. Well, never mind how. It'll save us some sweat, that's all. Stephen, please, be careful. There's something here that makes me... I would go ahead. Not on your life, Miguel. This is one big step I'm going to take. Come on, follow me. Good Lord. 
It's an enormous chamber. It's like a giant cathedral. Bring the lamps up. That door. It's it's cut in a single block. Oh, yes. It must weigh at least ten tons. Look at the bar reliefs on the walls. It is the devil that these people worshipped. Beautiful. Sinister, malevolent, but beautiful. Bring the lamps forward. <laughs> have found what we are looking for. The sacrificial chambers of the temple. Yes, you're right, Miguel. Can you uh, make out these inscriptions? I see, yes. They tell the story of the ritual. These were incense burners where human hearts smoked. The skulls piled at the base of that enormous slab of stone were sacrificed on that altar. Well, Miguel just described it, my dear. The stone slab was the altar. No, I mean in the center of the altar. Probably the debris of centuries. I just saw something stir. It's a baby. Completely naked. That girl's tongue. Oh, poor child. No. There, no. Oh, he's lovely. He's so warm. Well, how could he be warm? It's so cold and damp in here. Well, he must have been left here a few minutes ago. Well, perhaps someone left him as a... as a warning to us. Oh, but impossible. There is no other entrance besides the stone doors, not even windows. This was the sacrificial chamber of these ancient people. Well, then how, Miguel? I don't know. And I'm afraid the answer, if we ever find it will not be pleasant. Well, at least whoever left him had sense enough to leave some protection. There's a woven mat on the altar. See? And that is one of the mysteries that troubles me. What are you saying, Miguel? The fabric the child is lying on. Examine it. Yes. Yes, I see what you mean. It was woven when the temple was new. When a bright star appears in the east and a child is born, there is a season of celebration. But when a child appears on a sacrificial slab of the temple of an ancient people who worship the devil, what will the season bring? We live by the philosophy that no one is born evil. That only time and circumstance can corrupt the innocence of an infant. And yet, deep within us, we feel some doubt when monsters arise. What made Cain? Was Adolf Hitler or Jack the Ripper ever a clean slate? Why should we not wonder even stronger when a child appears out of nowhere in the temple of Satan. Well, I am not happy to see you leave, my friends. We'll miss you too, Miguel. Oh, that of course, but I wish you had not decided to adopt the baby and take him with you. I would have preferred you to leave him here with me until I could uh, ascertain what his origins are. I think he's right, Amelia. There's still time to change our minds. Oh, no. No, we fought harder to take him with us than those artifacts from the chamber. I'm not going to give him up now. What difference does it make where our son came from or who left him there? He's a perfectly normal baby and he means more to me than the trophies we're carrying off. Well, if you have made your minds up, then all I can say is, why I come to you? I am very delighted that you both have what you wish. Stephen, your find will have an historical impact. <laughs> Our find, Miguel, would have been impossible without you. And my gratitude for helping us with the baby. We've named your godchild Michael for you. Ah, <laughs> a great honor, Emil. You'll keep trying to trace his parents? Yes, if that is what you wish. Don't try too hard, Miguel. It doesn't matter where he came from. 
We're all he needs from now on. I hope you are right, Emilia. <laughs> Stamper here. Oh, no. I'm sorry. That will have to wait. And look, another thing. Don't set up any more interviews. My wife and I have had it. All right, I'll let you know. Right. <laughs> Don't be so short with Conrad. He's only trying to promote your book. I know he is, Amelia, but we're entitled to some privacy. We've been back home for almost a year now, and I'm sick of interviews and publicity. The people poking around here. Oh, you know you don't mean that. You're positively glowing with success. Yeah. You proved your theory about the pre teltic people, the influence they had on earlier civilizations, and, well, just look at the results. Academic honors and, oh, the fantastic sale of your books on the expedition. This year has been good for you, Steve. Well, of course it has, Amina, but if we hadn't gone on that bloody trip, we'd have some peace at least. We wouldn't have Michael. Well, no, you're right, my dear. Oh, he's quite a handful for a kid his age. Only a year old. He's been walking for months. And he's such a good-looking child. He's so well-behaved. Oh, too well-behaved. You know, it's scary. He hardly makes any sounds at all. Oh, count your blessings. Our neighbors envy us so. They want to know how I discipline Michael. <laughs> he's such an angel. Doesn't need any discipline. Well, maybe he does, but I do. I've got to finish my notes for the lecture tour. Are you sure you won't come with me, Amelia? Well, who'd look after Michael? Well, Karen, she's perfectly capable. Oh, nonsense. I mean, you'll be gone in a month. And he needs me. So do I. Oh, don't tell me you're jealous. Oh, no, no, no. But I am disturbed. You've got to give a little, Lamb. Don't try to smother him. It's no good for either of you. Expect you home so soon. It's Michael's birthday, so I thought I'd be early. I was taking a sentimental journey back through the years with Michael's birthday books. Here he is at two. <laughs> yes, I remember. We took him to the zoo and he was fascinated. <laughs> Here he is a year ago, five years old, growing like a weed. Oh, that reminds me. What can I do to help with the festivities? Um, Nothing. Just relax. Where's Mike? Well, I, I sent him out to play. On his birthday? I don't understand. What's wrong, Amelia? Nothing. The party's off? No one's going to show up? Is that it? Oh, who cares? Well, you do for one. Why aren't they coming? Because we have stuffy neighbors with stuffy children. I just think it's time we moved. Oh, they're all out of step, hmm? That's right. Take their side. Oh, for heaven's sake. Yeah, ma'am, I'm not taking any side. I just want to know... Well, he tears butterflies apart. Yanks legs off frogs. Well, he's inherited your scientific curiosity. Oh, you know that's impossible. Well, I, I mean, you would you set an example for him? Um, level with me, would you? What happened between Michael and the fielding child? Nothing. I, I, I told you. All right, then. You don't mind if I call them and straighten this out? You you, you go ahead and, and call. You'll agree. It. It's a tempest in a teapot. I'd rather hear it from you, Em. Sarah? Is this Stephen? Stephen Stampler? Well, yes, I know. I read your note. Well, can you tell me why? Michael did what? Are you sure? I see. Yes, I know how you feel. And, uh... Thanks for being direct. Bye. Well? Uh, I just don't understand. What? Curiosity. It's simple, childish curiosity. Children try to discover the world around them. They, they smell, taste... Heal. They hurt. Well, yes, sometimes they hurt. Not out of malice. Try to be honest, Em. 
How would you feel if you were Sarah Fielding? I hope I'd have the good sense to take things in stride. Would you? I can't believe it's you, Amelia. You've lost all sense of objectivity. And you've lost all sense of proportion. Are you trying to cast Michael as a, as a monster? I'd like to understand him. But I think I need help. And so does he. Lena? Oh, <laughs> there you are. How are the silver bells? Fine. But the cockle shells are a bit droopy, and so am I. Oh, nonsense. Very gallant, Stephen. But age is beginning to catch up. I don't know where the last ten years have disappeared. Seems only yesterday that Michael was six, entering school for the first time. Now he's almost grown. Seventeen. Oh, my, you look handsome today. Oh. Are you even wearing a tie? <laughs> yes, so I have. What's the occasion? We have a friend in town, old Cerubius. Oh, I didn't know he was in this day. Well, neither did I. He's consulting with the museum people, and he'd like to see us. I asked him out to lunch. Ah, oh, that was thoughtful. Now, there's no need to fuss, Amelia. Of course not. I'll get the soil off my hands and throw something together. If Miguel doesn't mind, I certainly don't. Well, thank you, Em. Is there anything I can get from town for you? No, just hurry back. Cerubius is dying to see Mike. What, 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 what time is Mike due here? Oh, dear, I forgot to tell you. There was a letter from Michael in the morning mail. He's staying at the academy through the holidays. Well, that's odd. Did you say why? Well, he wants to catch up with some schoolwork, and there's an experiment going in the lab. He, well, he just can't leave. Well, that's too bad. Miguel was looking forward to a visit with Mike. He made quite a point of it. This is quite a machine. <laughs> it sounds like my coffee grind. <laughs> it's reliable transportation, Miguel, despite the noise it makes. <laughs> and how is the boy? Well, very well. And so is Amelia. You look fit. I should be. I still clamber over rocks like a mountain goat and dig interminable tunnels. Have you uh, found anything more at the old digs? Enough to verify your findings. But one thing we never discovered. No trace of Mike's parents, eh? No, no. I have shown the pictures you sent me to every man, woman, and child in the region. Nothing. Hmm. Well, how is he getting on? He seems to like it at the academy. As a matter of fact, things are going so well there, he won't be home for the holidays. I'm sorry. Oh, it's too bad. I must see him. You... Uh, perhaps I still can't. Well, he's not due home until the summer vacation. In that case, Mohammed must go to the mountain. That's quite a trip. <laughs> not to see a godchild. <laughs> Well, here we are. We're here at last. Miguel, how nice to see you again. It is always a pleasure, dear Amelia. Oh, you look more enchanting than ever. Oh, thank you. You're so good for my ego. I have drinks set on the terrace. Would you like to unpack first? Uh, no, I think not. A drink would be fine, and then I must be going. But you've just arrived. I prepared lunch. We haven't seen you in years. Too many years. I know, but I may get a chance to stop in before I go home. What made you change your mind? He's going to visit Mike. Aren't you, old friend? Yes, I think so. Oh, he'll be delighted, as we are disappointed. I hope so. It would be nice to feel wanted by a godchild I have not seen since he was uh, uh, an infant. I'm sure he'd love to see you. He keeps asking about you all the time. You can feel flattered, Miguel. You seem to be the only human being he has any interest in. Yeah, besides you and Emilia. Of course. That's a strange thing to say. Oh, you must forgive me. I have not been in civilized company for ages. My... 
Conversation is a little, how do you say it? Uh, Rusty? Exactly. <laughs> my bones and my speech are undoubtedly growing rusty. <laughs> that is why I want to see him on this trip. I may never have the opportunity again. Stephen? I'm just finishing the shelf, dear. Very well. Michael, I, I don't understand. No hello? Should I go out and start over again? <laughs> Quit not, silly. Hello, darling. Uh, that's more like it. Stephen, it's Michael. Mike! I know. Mother had the same reaction. I just got through sooner than I thought I would, so I rushed home. Put your bags in your room, and I'll fix something to eat. You look well, Dad. Why shouldn't I? Measure is good for the thinking classes. Well, you look a bit drawn. Are they pushing you? No, I'm pushing myself. There's so much to do. What's new? Your godfather paid us a visit. He wanted to see you. Well, here I am. Well, you had to leave. Obviously, he didn't get to see you at the academy. No. I didn't even know he planned to make the trip. Oh, that's odd. He said he would go to the academy directly. We must have crossed paths. Oh, excuse me, Mike. Hello. Yes, this is Dr. Stephen Stamper. Would you mind reading it? What? Would you read that again, please? Oh, my God. What is it, dear? It's a wire from the academy. They found Serubius. Found him? Yes. Miguel is dead. Michael! Michael! Are you home? He's out, Amelia. His car's gone. Strange. He seemed out of the weather this morning. Well, he didn't want to attend the funeral. Oh, nonsense. He just wasn't feeling well. You still believe that act after all these years? You know, he's always avoided unpleasantness that way. Well, it was unpleasant, Stephen. An old friend to... to go that way. All right, all right, Anne. It's all over. What could have done it? You mean who, Anne? No, I don't. Nothing human could have been responsible for Miguel's death. I wonder. You wonder what, Dad? Where did you come from, Michael? You startled me. I was in the garage. My fan belt's loose. I was tightening it. You should have come to the funeral. What for? I never saw Professor Cerubius. He was your godfather. You were his namesake. I wasn't feeling so hot anyway. I thought I was coming down with something. How do you feel now? Better, I think. You look healthy enough to me. Well, that doesn't mean a thing. I'll put the tea up, and then it's off to bed with you. She still thinks you're a child, Mike. I know. I want to talk to you, Dad. That's why I came home from school. Well, that's true. I really don't know what I want to do. I think I've had the academy. But you said you liked it there. You're doing well. I know, but I, I can't make the scene there anymore. Too much work? No, not really. I'm just not on to some of the stuff I've got to handle there. The creeps in Fairmount are still living in the 17th century. They'd have witch burning if the law didn't forbid it. What's that got to do with you? Well, some of my experiments have got them on the warpath. I thought you were working in the physical sciences. Well, not exactly. I've been going beyond that. Like what? Well, for one thing, ESP. You've always felt I had it. Well, that's not considered supernatural today. Yeah, I know, but the townies think it is. Well, that's all the fuss I think you should stay on. It never pays to bow down to ignorance. I'm glad you see it that way, Dad. Oh, but there's more, isn't there? Huh? What do you know about my people? Where I come from? Not too much. How about Cerubius? Well, he thought he was on to something... He was on his way to talk to you about it. Mm. Too bad we missed each other. 
Did you? Well, of course. I told you I was on my way back here when I heard... That's not exactly what happened, Mike. He called me from the airport when he landed. What did he say? I don't know. Amelia and I were out. He left a message with our answering service. He said he was going right out to see you. That he had phoned ahead. I never heard from him. And that if anything happened, there was a letter that he was mailing to us. Well, then you did hear from him. By mail, at least. We never received the letter. Did you? Now you're accusing me of tampering with your mail? I'm only asking, Michael. Do you really think I saw Cerubius that night? Did you, Mike? You're as bad as the townspeople. What do you want to hear? A full confession? Oh, okay. I saw the old man. I killed him. Is that enough? Or do you want me to invent the gory details, too? Fear can be a force for good or evil. It can keep us from harm. Or it can be a malignancy that feeds on darkness and ignorance. Is Mike a victim of rumor and coincidence? Or is he truly evil? There is a peculiar kind of fear we call courage that makes us go on when all we want to do is find peace and shelter. It makes men who fear heights climb mountains. Soldiers who detest war and suffering advance on bloody battlefields. Some call it pride rather than courage. Choose now. Retreat now and regret it. Or go on with me to Act Three. Mark, I've just heard from the police. They're still running down leads on the murder of Serubius. But they admit it seems hopeless. Too bad. Did you ever get the letter he said he mailed you? No, I... Don't know what could have happened. Neither do I. How are you doing in the workshop? I don't know. Thank God frogs are such fast breeders. I kill them off so fast. No results? Only with our neighbors. They seem to connect my frogs with everything bad that's happening. The Gilmore child comes down with meningitis. My frogs are responsible. The the drought and the unusual heat. The salmonella outbreak. All part of my wicked machinations. How would you like to come out of retirement? Both of you. What do you mean? I'd like to go back to the place you found me. To see if I can trace my origins. Maybe I'll find myself then. Well, I don't know, Mike. I just hadn't thought about it. Well, then don't. Let's just do it. It's a gift from our loving neighbors. It's a brick. There's a note attached to it. Let me see that, Mike. This is your last warning. Leave or we will send you back to the hell where you belong. (laughs) They're not all clods after all. Someone has imagination and a gift of expression. This is no laughing matter, Mike. I'm going to find out who's responsible for this outrage. Uh, Dr. Stamper, delighted to see you. I think we can do without the formalities, Reverend Stokes. I just want some answers. Yes, so do I. I haven't seen you in church for quite a while. You're very fortunate I didn't attend last week. I don't think you'd care for my reaction to your sermon. Oh, then you don't believe in the presence of Satan. No, I don't. All I know is what that kind of talk leads to. Oh, the brick, you mean. I'm sorry about that. Well, yes, you should be. You've got these farmers half insane with your superstitious prattle. Some say that about religion. I wonder why. All right, let's not get sidetracked, Reverend Stokes. I don't want a theological debate. I want you to tell your congregation the truth. And what is that, Dr. Stamper? That my son Mike raises frogs for his lab experiments. Shall I tell them to believe in coincidence? What coincidence? That a peaceful town is ripped apart every time your son returns. That cattle die for no reason at all. That we are suffering epidemics and the worst drought in our history. 
All because of coincidence? Yes, yes, you tell them that. This is the 20th century. What else could it be? Ask your son, Dr. Stamper. Ask him if he's just doing lab experiments. I told you, Dad, I'm going back where you found me, with or without you. Mike, that is foolish. Serubius excavated for years but found nothing. What makes you think you care? Because I was born to it and Serubius was not. He was contaminated by Spanish blood. My lines are pure. I need to find my way to another world. Will you come with me? You're not serious, Mike. I've got to go, Mother. I thought you'd understand. Well, I do. I, I just want you to think things through a little longer. Go back to school. Just finish this semester and then we'll all go back. I promise you. That makes sense, Mike. It's only a few months. What do you say? Okay. But I won't let you stall me past then. I think my word is good enough. It is, Dad. Then, that's settled. Now, why don't you take Dad out for a walk? This room needs cleaning and airing. Are you implying? Not at all. I'm uh, stating it quite clearly. Either I clean this place now or I'll send in some goats to keep you company tonight. Now, shoot. Okay, I'll go. Uh, how about the keys to the car? I thought we were going for a walk. Well, take a rain check. I'd like to drive into the city. I'll be my guest. Here. Yeah. Just drive carefully. Don't worry. I'll be back for dinner. Can I give you a hand, Amelia? I don't think so, Stephen. My, this place is dusty. I'll empty the trash basket for you. Just dump things in the uh, plastic bag. Don't you feed Mike, Amelia? Of <laughs> course I do. Look at all these hamburger wrappings. Well, I think he feeds his frogs with them. Oh, no. What's wrong, Stephen? You're as white as a sheet. Yeah. It's a piece of paper. Well, what is it? Part of an envelope, Amelia. The one that contained the letter Serubius wrote to us. <gasps> oh, my God. But why didn't I... Destroy the letter? That's what I'm wondering, too. And I don't like the answer I get. Hello. Yes, this is Dr. Stampler. He what? Can't be. We'll be right over. Yes, but I, I want to see my son. What is it, Stephen? <laughs> what? Stokes. I don't want to see him. I want to see my son. Hello. Hello. He hung up. Well, what happened? Mike. They're looking for him. What for? They claim he's killed someone. I don't believe it. What? With the car? I mean, was it an accident? It was no accident. They found Claire Baxter dead. Oh, what's that got to do with Mike? They claim he was seen near the place where the body was found. Where's Mike now? He's disappeared. They found our car in the ravine. Oh, no. I'll go see her. Good evening. Yes, Reverend Stokes, what is it? May I come in? No, you may not. Now clear out of here. Oh, what's wrong with you, Steve? Please come in, Reverend. Thank you, Mrs. Stampler. I know it's painful, but I must talk to you. What is there to talk about? Your son. I tried to reach you before with facts, but you wouldn't listen. Well, why should I have all these silly nonsense? No nonsense this time, I'm afraid. Your son has committed murder. Just because he was seen near where the girl was found, I'll bet half the no town would have been No one else in town would kill the way Claire was slaughtered. Please, I don't want to hear any more. Can we just sit quietly and wait? For what? For your son to return. And then what? Then we'll... We'll do what must be done. You won't wait here. Now, be sensible. There are men just beyond this door. I would prefer to do this as reasonably as possible. Do what? Just ask him a few questions, Mrs. Sampler. Now, please let me handle this. Or would you prefer mob violence? 
Ask your questions, Stokes. Oh, I'm here. You might save yourself. Not yet. I've got a score to settle with old Nosey. Sit down, Michael. It's all over for you. For you, meddler. No, Asmodeus, your time has come. Asmodeus? Asmodeus, Satan, whatever you call yourself. Sit down and answer my questions. I've changed my mind. I'll answer your questions if you catch me. Stop him, Stephen. Please don't let him go. No, I'm in it. Don't worry. Stokes will never get him. Neither will that mob. He's on his way back. Back where? Where we found him, Amelia. In the sacrificial chamber. Sorobia said someday Mike would return. <laughs> I'm all right, Stephen. Do you think we'll find him? He wanted so badly to find his way back. He must be here. I'm glad he got away from the mall. I'm not so sure about that. I pieced together Serubius' letter from the scraps in the wastebasket. It explains a great deal. Michael was not just an ordinary Indian child abandoned by his parents. Tribes have a legend about the pure-born son of kings who is sacrificed for his people. Do you think Michael? I don't know, Amelia. I don't know what to believe anymore. There's, there's a light in the chamber ahead. I know. Hold this lantern, Amelia. Hold it high. Don't come any closer. Michael. Oh, thank you. God, we found you. Where are you, Mike? Boy, we believe in you. We trust you. Stay where you are. Do as I tell you. We, we want to help you. Then leave. That's the best you can do for me. You kept me from my destiny when you took me from this tomb. Let me fulfill it now. We love you, Michael. Please save yourself. Hold the lantern higher, Amelia. What is it? There's a child, Em. There's a baby on the altar where we found Mike. It's Michael. Oh, my God. It's Michael. It, it can't but be. He is. I remember every detail. Stay back. Stay, stay back, Amelia. Don't come any closer. It's a child on the altar. It's Mike. Someone... Or something is standing over it. Huh? Oh, no. Oh, no. I can't believe it. The chance are... Oh, God, no. My God. Oh, my God. It's too late, Amelia. It's all over now. Whoever it was... Has disappeared, Amelia. He's gone. A child is born, becomes a man, then dies. The natural order of things. No one can upset it. But not in the case of Michael Stampler, or whatever his true name was. He was plucked out of antiquity by accident and returned there by desire. Our cast included Patricia Rowe, Ralph Bell, Don Scardino, and Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. The preceding Mystery Theater program was furnished by the CBS Radio Network. Your dial is set for 15 minutes of late news with John Scott reporting. This is WOR New York, an RKO General Station, your station for news as it happens.